five, five. Is this your three thousand? Let me twist that so it's perfect. Yeah, straight. I passed that a long time ago. Where's I've your got, five thousand? Uh, they quit making them. Well, I thought you had a five thousand yeah. somewhere. They, it, you're fine, honey. See, that's strictly related to museum volunteer hours. Oh. And uh, yeah, they finally they they quit uh, buying these things after three thousand. So I just left it alone. Well, that's what they were doing. I think they were doing it. They keep stopping that even. Yeah. Well, okay, I've got some. Questions. I've got more than seven thousand hours here. I know that. But I quit keeping them because they quit keeping them. How's it sound, Denise? Yeah. Um, it sounds fine from here. <laughs> that sounds fine from here. Thanks, Eddie. You know, my wife is really the key to doing all of this. She makes a lot of the phone, like she did with you, makes the phone calls. And How do you do that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can have one of those things in here. All right, we don't need to run that. Crazy anymore. wire, yeah. The batteries are going to run out. Actually, you're, you sounded great just now, actually, so. <laughs> There's no sinks under your... Yeah, put your right there. Now that I bump it a little bit. You didn't have to do that. Okay, so reposition the hole. I tell you. Okay, so yeah, fix me up again in the center and then uh, let's lock it down here somehow. Okay, I look pretty good. Yep, okay, I see red lines, okay. Okay, excuse me for hopping over this. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to, do we bring you a Pepsi or something? Probably not. Yeah, I might sneak out in a minute. I'm going to get back up in here. Did you okay. want to do your color test real quick? Okay. This is for color correcting. We just later. need you to hold this in front of you for just a second. Okay. And, uh, let me get this real good. It's in focus, too. <laughs> okay, then we're winning. Yeah. And um, should I just set this next to you or anything? Or the only um, thing, yeah, if you would, so just put it right down there. Just do whatever you need to do. We can edit or yeah. we can have I, like I brought a Coke with me just so I could keep my mouth wet. Of course. How are you more organizing we are? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Okay. Okay, Bill, so again, um, Probably, again, uh, just do it naturally. Go ahead and tell your own story. We don't need to ask too many questions, probably. Um, other than just tell us all about your your side of the story. You have personalize it, kind of like you're telling it to your family. Sure. Look straight into the camera. Yeah. And uh, thank you for letting us be here. Seriously, this is going to be fun. And Denise is really going to enjoy some of your oh, stories. Yeah. So, so all the stories <laughs> about, uh, we don't want you to get in trouble, but again, the statute of limitations, any behind-the-scenes stories? Yeah, I've got what a few of like those, and, and, and I, I have to be careful with a couple of them. But I don't well, do know that. if I could. I don't know if they could throw me in the clink for any of this stuff. Well, but, that's right. Uh, Who knows? On that kind of stuff, yeah. they don't throw you in the clink. The CIA just pays a visit to you. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so we don't want that. And the other thing is, uh, we know you have so much respect for your fellow pilots and and the way they, do, you know. So just keep that demeanor. But. Um, Anyway, I'm sure you, uh, your family, and we can edit out whatever you like to, but uh, uh, I know you've already told one good story, so I'm going to shut up and let you talk. <laughs> Are you okay. going to so clap or do a I clap? Just, just, oh, okay. All right. Action. Hi. Uh, my name is William Van Cleve. Everybody calls me Bill, and a lot of worse things, but uh, Bill is okay. And the last name is spelled capital V-A-N, space, capital C-L-E-V-E. -E. The Van Cleves are all over the place. And there are a lot of different ways to spell the name. So I just thought I'd clarify that. Um, I was born in a tiny little farm town in northeastern Arkansas called Osceola. Spelled just like it sounds, O-S-C-E-O-L-A, Osceola, Arkansas way up in the northeastern part of the state and very near, obviously, the southeastern part of Missouri. And that's important because that's where my family came from. They didn't come from Arkansas, they came from Missouri. Uh, my dad 
and his family were reared in Malden, M-A-L-D-E-N, Malden, Missouri, uh, in Dunklin County, Missouri. Some people call it the boot that sticks down, the heel of the boot that sticks down into Arkansas. Uh, Osceola was a little cotton town, about 2,000 people, I think. I, they may have climbed up to five now. I really don't know because I haven't been there in many years. But uh, the early days for me in that little town were just wonderful. My mom's family had uh, uh, farmers in the family who lived on the outskirts of the town in that county, Mississippi County. I used to love to go out on trips into the county to uh, see my cousins and my mother's family uh, because, like I said, it was, it was cotton country, and this was before uh, World War II started. I was born in 1928, so you can do your own math. I was born in August uh, in 1928. But um, farm life, even though it was a small town, it was totally different from that little town. So we had town people, we had farm people or country people. And my family had both. And I loved going out into the country because one of the first things I discovered that they had in the country that we didn't have in town were crop dusters. And that's where I got my early fascination with airplanes. Uh, crop dusting had been going on since uh, the late 20s when I was born. But... Uh, Things were happening at a very sl slow pace in aviation in those days, but a lot of people don't understand that they were happening. They were people uh, in that industry, uh, the uh, crop dusting industry, which really was an industry, and really had a lot to do with the design of airplanes in the 30s and the 40s, right up until the time the war started. Uh, there were airplanes that were famous and were uh, highly and prominently used in farming, in seeding, and uh, they called it dusting, but a lot of times it were just pellets. You could uh, lay the seed for the crops, whatever they were, uh, and by the time World War II started, uh, they'd become pretty, pretty uh, sophisticated in what they were doing large hoppers with fertilizers in them, uh, which became notorious later because they found out that a lot of those uh, insecticides and uh, herbicides and whatnot were not good for us. And uh, so they had a lot to do with food production and the design of the airplanes uh, how the wings were attached to the fuselage and what the dihedral was, the shape of the wings versus the shape of the, of the ground and the fuselage uh, became very important in the design of early warplanes. Uh, the United States had to pretty much design their own because the designs that worked in Europe and Japan and in England just didn't work in the United States. And it's an important thing that uh, historians need to pay more attention to because by the time the war started for America in 41, it was obvious that the designs that had worked and were working in Europe and in Japan uh, did not work in this country. The designs that worked in England different from the rest of Europe, it did work in this country. And some of the early de Havilland models were prominent in America. And uh, uh, other designers and manufacturers took advantage of what the English had learned, but we didn't learn very much really in aeronautics and aeronautical engineering from the Japanese or from the Russians, who were probably the clumsiest of all in the beginning, and uh, the Germans. The things that the Germans designed and used uh, worked more than the ones in Japan did. 